Good morning. Welcome to Fiber Town. Ah, this is episode 67. The one with the tongue. Bah. It is May 22nd, 2014. Um, I'm Emily. I am Chain of Fools on Ravelry and Fiber Town with an R-E on Instagram. And there is a group on Ravelry. And you can come say hey and chat. And this is Alice. This is Alice's butt. Um, we are in a different place today. Come here. Um, we are in the living room, slash craft room, slash music, slash library room. That's Alice. <laughs> Alice, come see. What's up there? No, what's up there? Look up a little higher. There you go. So yeah, we're just hanging out, kind of like fighting and stuff. Do you want to fight? Anyway. Nothing good to eat. Just going to hang out here. So, enough um, Alice shenanigans for the moment. What? What did I say? Shenanigans? Anyway. Welcome to Stacy L. Stone from Michigan. She introduced herself in the uh, introductions thread and said, Hey! Hey, Stacy! I grew up in Michigan. It's cold there. Um, I need to start out with a mea culpa. What do they call this in... In newspapers, they called it a retraction. I'm publishing a retraction. Uh, last week, I was so worked up about Jan Smiley and her awesome bag that I won from the Carolina Fiber Girls that I mixed things around in my very advanced brain and said that she, that Jan Smiley was the person who puts on South. That is not the case. Um, she does the Carolina Fiber Frolic. Did I get it right this time? Yes, I hope so. So my mistake completely um, Jan never said she is the organizer of SAF. I did, because I'm awesome, and I make things up. Um, so she does Carolina Fiber Frolic. My bad. <sighs> so, today we have a giveaway. We're going to talk Autism Awareness Craft Along, which is coming to an end pretty soon. We have FOs, Whips, Spinning, Acquisition, and Up and Coming. All right, let's start with the giveaway, shall we? Alice is back for the giveaway. What'd you bring us? A tennis ball. Come here. Go get it. All right. We have, oh, seriously? I didn't bring the, I always forget something. I'll show a picture. Okay, can you see I'm being, uh-oh. People want their giveaway, Alice. We don't have time to. Hunt down tennis balls that have fallen away. Oh. <clears throat> okay. All right, we had nine, no, nine, two through 92. Let's see if you can catch it. I doubt it. Nice! Super Alice today. Um, okay, so let's see. Two through 92, and what this lucky person is going to win is two ounces of the Spinner's Hill colorway and a gourmet stash bag. And I will just, because it's over there hanging on my wall to keep it safe and it's all packaged up beautifully, I will show you a picture of what it looks like. Let me show you a picture of this first. <laughs> Isn't that special? You're like, do the giveaway. All right, <clears throat> giveaway. All right, <clears throat> pardon me. Last week I was quite uh, allergy, clearing my throat all the time. I apologize. I might be doing that again this week. I'm sorry. Um, it's just a fact of life in D.C. in the spring with the tree pollen and me and most people. Okie dokie. Um, this is what it looks like. Look at that gorgeousness. It is full of awesome fibers, and that's a picture of the bag. There we go. So that is what this lucky person <clears throat> will be winning. So <clears throat> we have numbers 2 through 92. And let's push generate. Number 83. All right, let's see who that is. Number 83. And I loved um, reading about you all's spinning and fiber festival memories. It was really, did I say 83? I think I did. Soul, 
stitches. She says, I've never been to a festival before, I wish, but my fondest spinning memory would be spinning my first skein of usable yarn. That is always a fun thing. Um, she's Margaret from Spain. She lives in Alicante. Oh my gosh, she's been knitting for 50 plus years. Wow. Okay, so soul stitches. Get in touch with me and I will send this out to España. Mmm, Alicante. That's where they have the good paella, right? Near Valencia? I've been to Valencia. It's nice. Never been to Alicante. Um, oh my goodness, this dog. So, congratulations, soul stitches. The rest of you, go check out Gourmet Stash. Um, she's got amazing stuff, obviously. Love her stuff. Thank you for entering. And um, if you are entering the Autism Awareness Craft Along, <laughs> I love that dog. If you have entered the Autism Awareness Craft Along, um, many of you have. Keep doing it. Uh, I will announce the winners for all of those prizes on the first episode in June. And there are gorgeous things. And everything that has been entered qualifies. I know people are like, does this qualify? Is it bright enough? Does it? It's all good. You know, we're just raising awareness about <clears throat> living with autism, um, living with people who have autism, educating people with autism, um, and realizing that here's a really I don't I don't want to say too much about <clears throat> the you know the causes are not completely determined <clears throat> scientifically yet, and I don't want to say too much about uh, diagnosis and um, you know qualities of people who have autism because every single person who has autism is different the one thing I would like to draw attention to and you know as a professional I don't want to be giving advice um, general generalized advice you know in a public forum because it's very individualized um, it's a spectrum people are affected differently by it um, but one thing I would like to emphasize is the language you use when you talk about autism. And then I'll stop talking about it. Um, you don't say a person, in my opinion, you don't say a person is autistic. Because that would mean that that is the defining characteristic of that person. They are autistic. They have autism is the word I prefer to use because primarily they are a person. They are not an primarily autistic. They are a human being and uh, while they communicate differently and see the world differently in many cases, um, they can they still function as a human being in a different way. So it's that is versus has um, semantics that I think makes a big difference in the way people eventually start to think about it. So I prefer to say a person has autism rather than they are autistic. Um, they are a person with autism. So, anyway, beautiful things in the craft along. Um, beautiful, 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 amazing prizes. Um, I showed them last week, so I won't show them today, but I will show them again as I give them away. And enter, please. Um, yes. All right, so finished objects. I completed a Joris. He was gorgeous. I gave him to my my nephew. I'm gonna find a picture because my nephew who turned four this weekend, he has his Joris. And <clears throat> I think he liked him. Let me show you a couple. He's a cutie. There's the nephew with his Joris in the woods. And here is a picture of him hugging his Joris. He liked him. Um, and I pulled, I, I've never done this before. There's my Joris. And you notice it's in the car. That's because I was stuffing him on the way to the party. Actually had the bag of fiber fill in the car. And then I stayed in the car for about 20 minutes weaving in ends and, um, zhuzhing the Joris. So... <laughs> Didn't the yarn harlot, isn't she famous for doing that kind of thing? I can't remember. But yeah, 
Oops. So he was finished at the very, very, very last minute. Um, but I got him done. It took me a little bit less than a week. So I really just knit on the Joris all week. It's a great pattern. It's by Anita. I think I said Anna last week. Anita Wilshut. And it's J-O-R-I-S, Joris. I will link to it in the show notes. So the second one I've made. I think I'm going to make one when I go to Spain this summer. Um, I think it's a, it's a great thing to have as a memory of a trip. My other F.O. is this hat. It's really hard to capture the amazing colors of this yarn. This is spun from Gourmet Stash Mega Tribbles in the Black Watch Tartan. That's a little bit better. It's beautiful. It's still damp. Um, it's a huge hat for my Charlie Brown head husband. He's got a big head. It's going to be a little slouchy, I think. And my hair is going to be my hair is going to be awful after this. It's got a nice little spiral crown decrease. I made this this hat up as I went along. And it's probably why it's a little big. Um, it was kind of a sport DK weight. Oh, good. I'm going to have to redo my hair. Um, there are the crown decreases. This is yak, superfine merino silk. I think bamboo as well. And it was amazing to spin, amazing to work with. I love the colors. Um, yeah, I have so, I have a little bit left over, and I think it's going to go into my leftovers blanket because it's too beautiful not to have permanently in my house. <sighs> I'm making I'm making lots of hats for Father's Day, and this is number one. My husband likes my my hand knitted hats, so I will make him hand knitted hats. That's it for FOs, and Alice has tired herself out. Let's see if I can show you. There's the ball. I'm so tuckered. <laughs> Alice, say hi to the people. Do you like to go for walks and stuff? Yeah, I do too. We'll go later. That's a good girl. All right, works in progress. This is an Alice-centric episode. We haven't had one of those in a while. So all of you who like the Alice-centric episodes, this is for you. Okie dokie. Uh, works in progress. Um, with all the Jorising, there wasn't a whole lot of progress. But there was random stuff that happened. And I have a hoe. This is the Kale Wobbles. Out of Enchanted Knoll Farms in the common grackle colorway. Look at that. I love how in this pattern you can you get the... The beauty of watching the variegated yarn, what it does in stockinette. And then you get to see what it does in the collie wobbles. Super fun. This just glows, doesn't it? So I got, I think, just the right amount of negative ease in this pair. That's beautiful. It is, it is that beautiful, this yarn. This yarn is stunning. I won this yarn on the Knit One Heart 2 podcast for some sort of sweater knit along, I think. Yay for winning. So this is supposed to be my autism awareness object. And it's the 22nd of May, and I have... Look, I cast on the second one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to, you know, be able to finish my own craft along. Although... I can't win any prizes, so. But these will definitely get finished. Um, love the yarn, love the color, love the pattern. It's a win. So let me put that over here, and let me show you what else is going on whips-wise. I still have my lollipop socks on the needles, but nothing has been done. Um, I started swatching, however. <clears throat> I have a couple of patterns in mind. Um, I went shopping to get some tops for our trip, and I, while I found a lot of bottoms I liked, I didn't find tops that I liked. So I was thinking, oh, I could, I have a few summery yarns, I could knit something. So I looked at this one. This is the Heliotropic Pullover by Mercedes Tarasovich Clark. I was thinking, I love that. And the other one was a Twist Collective pattern. Again, I'm name-dropping the Yarn Harlot because she has knit it. 
Um, let's see, it's called the Lisette with a Z, L-I-Z-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. And it's got an ampere waist. Oops. And it's very flattering. Here it is. It's by Ann Ginger. It was from the Twist Collective three years ago. And it looks like this. Isn't that pretty? It's a microfiber blend. I think microfiber cotton. So I have two yarns in my stash that I thought might be good for these, but I'm having trouble getting gauge, at least with this one. This is Euroflax um, sport weight linen, 100% linen and I'm just not getting age. I was thinking of that for this pullover. But it knits up very fine, and I did knit a tiny, this is not really a swatch. Oh, but I was just desperate to see how it washed up. This is my tiny swatch. And the gauge is very, very, very small, and I think the stitches, I think this would look better in a textured pattern. Um, because the stitches are just never going to be even, as far as like experienced linen knitters have told me. Um, you know, there's just a lot of unevenness in the stockinette. So, I don't know. I might, I might use this for the for a lace cardigan. I think this might be interesting. The other one, so that one didn't really work out for either of those patterns. The other one I'm swatching is Sierra. It's a Taki. Taki Cotton Classic, no, ta it's a Taki Yarn Sierra, and it's a linen silk rayon blend, and I've just started a swatch. Very soft. I think this could work. I'm not sure what the gauge is going to be yet, though. So, Anyway, those are the two patterns I have in mind, and just depends on the yarns. I don't really have any other summery, summery yarns. So um, I got both of those a deep, deep discount. Like the pink, I wouldn't have normally bought, but it sat on the shelf at my old local yarn store for months and months. It sat on the sale bin for months and months, and I have four of them that I got at a very good discount, like 40% off. So it's not cheap, so um, I want to use it at some point. That's really it for works in progress. Um, I am primed to cast on something new. Uh, it's either going to be a top or it's going to be a shawl. We'll see. I did some spinning though. <clears throat> I'm very, very, very close to finishing my Gourmet Stash Van Gogh's paint box. In fact, this is this. I have two cops. Oops, there goes one. And I cannot wait to ply. I only have two and a half poonies left to do. And then I'll be ready to chain ply. Um, so that should be gorgeous. I also started spinning singles of my Thin Fleece Burketta from Burketta that I dyed. This is combed fin. This is one, one ounce of singles. Very poorly put on this storage bobbin. But I can't wait to see what this looks like plied up. I think it's going to be, I'm going to do a two or a three ply. I'm going to sample and see what kind of weights I get. Knit a little bit of the fabric. It should be awesome. So. What I'm doing is I'm putting an ounce on each bobbin, and I'm putting this as bobbin number one. I'm using a Sharpie to mark it. And so then I will spin, I'll apply rather, the earliest bobbins with the latest bobbins to ensure, hopefully, um, consistency as much as possible in the plying. All right. Um, what else? Well, I did a massive renovation and it's still going on, of my craft area slash living room. I think I mentioned this a while ago that I dedicated this, the dining room space in my house, which never gets used because we eat in the kitchen. Um, and in the summer, if we have friends over, we eat on the porch. And um, I, so I dedicated the dining room space, which never got used, to instead of you know having just an unused dining room table, it's now a craft room. But I did a huge renovation for summer. Like, not a renovation, but a reorganization. So I took, let me show you. You want to see my stash? This is not all of it, but it's most of it. Bookshelves. It's my granny's rocker. 
my goal for the summer, there it is, my goal for the summer was to be able to look at my stash from the couch. There it is. I can't believe, those are Billy bookshelves from Ikea. I can't believe how much you can fit on one of them. It's insane. So I got rid of a lot of just sort of random furniture that was holding my stash and consolidated everything. And there were a few things that really didn't fit. Are you shocked by the size of my stash? I'm sure some of you have bigger stashes, but really, you can get a lot onto those bookshelves. So I need to get some glass doors to encase it and you know, protect the stash from bugs and dirt and stuff like that. Um, so one of the things that just didn't fit on the shelf, and I said, oh, I've had this for years. I better spin it. In fact, I think I got it maybe three years ago at the first Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival I ever attended, and I spun it. It is Icelandic, and it's been on my mind because of the Fiber Trek um, podcasts, Island Wool Knit Along with um, Sarah, who is Swensty on Rav. And it came out gorgeous. Um, Icelandic is a dual coated sheep, and you can see both parts of the coat, both parts of the fleece are in here. I don't know if you can see, but it's got darker outer hairs and then the downier inner hairs. There we go. See that? And I believe the downier hairs are for insulation and warmth, and the outer hairs are more for waterproofing. Or the outer part of the fleece is more like a hair, and the inner part is more like wool. But this is what they used to make, Lopa Pesa sweaters, and I don't know what this will turn into, but it's about 220 yards of a two-ply. And that was, it was pretty fun to spin. It had been sitting in my stash for too long. I need to really spin, spin some stuff. So I did call a, quite a bit of fiber that was just kind of junk fiber that was given to me and tossed it. I just don't want to keep stuff that I don't love. And it wasn't really going to, I don't think anyone else is really going to love it either. So I decided not to keep it for stuffing things. I don't make enough toys to warrant keeping like four pounds of fiber of kind of junky fiber so it's in the trash and it wasn't even wool so it couldn't even be composted so um let's see acquisitions i ordered from the woolery i got myself a five dent heddle for my loom and this is so i can weave with some bulkier yarns you see how big the the slots and the holes are. I am dying to weave with some of my hobbledehoy hand spun. I think it's going to be amazing. Amazing! So I have, it comes standard with an eight dent, which is more for a worsted weight. And then I have, um, I have a ten dent as well that doesn't really fit the loom, but I'm working on, I sawed a piece of it off and now I'm working on sanding it to make it fit. We shall see. So, um, yes, more weaving this week, for sure. What else is up and coming? I need to finish my collie wobbles. Um, I need to do some more fleece processing. My Jacob is all washed. Yogurt, the other uh, fleece I bought at Maryland Sheep and Wool, has not been washed. And I might do some of it today. It's kind of humid, but it is sunny. So, um, it's, it's not like it's going to get less humid. It's D.C. in the summer, so... Uh, up and coming, father, more Father's Day hats. I'm going to cast one on with the following, with this gorgeousness, which will stripe. These are all hand spun. <clears throat> this gorgeousness, which will stripe, which is fiber optic. And this gorgeousness, which is gourmet stash um, box of chocolate tribbles, which will not stripe, but will be awesome. So my husband should get at least four hats for Father's Day. That is it, really. <clears throat> Alice, you want to wake up and come and say goodbye? She's not sure. Come here, baby cakes. Can you give hugs? Oh, let's stretch a little bit. 
Good to be a dog. Big sigh. Can we have kisses? Okay. She's like, dude, I'm napping. I feel like there are a million things I have forgotten to tell you guys. Um, but I'll just tell you next time. So until next time, you all take care, and I will see you then. Bye-bye.